That's right, another month has passed because that's how time works. And before we can talk about the past, aka wrap up, we have to talk about the future. And as you can tell from the title, it's a TBR. Welcome to The Ponderings of Pete. I am Pete. This is my channel. I talk about sci-fi. I talk about fantasy. Mostly fantasy, honestly. And then sometimes I talk about some other weird books. And March is upon us. It's marching forward, obviously. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you would like to subscribe, please do and hit the bell notification so that my videos can reach you faster. And yeah, that's about it. All the books will be linked down below as well. If you want to use an affiliate link, if you go ahead and buy one, it's I get a small percentage of the commission. And because I'm using bookshop.org, the profits that are actually made from your purchase will go towards local bookstores because bookshop.org is a great nonprofit organization that's trying to be an Amazon substitute because Amazon is toxic. Without further ado, as the kids like to say, let's talk about the TBR. <laughs> So, first up, to nobody's surprise, I don't actually know how to do suspense in these things because I'd probably put things in the weird order. Infinite Jest. This is no surprise because I've been trying to read it for the last two months and my third and final month is upon me and I am maybe 200 pages in out of 900. So I'm going to have to knock out all 700 pages, whatever's left this month, which is going to be interesting at the very least, but I'm going to try to do it. Do my best because I'm committed to it. And I really just want to finish this book because it's interesting. I just have other books that have been more interesting and don't break my brain as much as Infinite Jest. So different types of reading, I guess. It, it really was what it comes down to. The next one is, let's kind of throw something else in, Providence of Fire by Brian Staveley. So I read Emperor's Blades this last month and I have thoughts I think usually I would probably DNF this series because I didn't have the funnest time with this series. There are specific critiques I have that I'll talk about in my wrap up that I just don't like. It was just kind of an average book or slightly below that average probably if we're being honest. But there are specific things that this author doesn't do well that I want to read about why, how, I, I want to figure out how he didn't do them well, if that makes any sense. I'm reading this almost from a writer's perspective of being like, oh, this is how you do something badly. And I know that's kind of weird, but I'm going to continue. It may come in the month that I'm just like, I don't feel like reading this because I have 10 books that I'm trying to read. And this may be one of the ones I cut out and just decide not to do the series. But as of right now, I think I'm planning on continuing it just to see if he can fix things or see how badly he does things and how he writes the stuff and how he writes it badly. Next up, well, I'm actually, this is, I'm really excited for this one. There's a bunch of short stories and Evie will be super excited, but I'm going to read The Ladies of Grace Adieu this month. This is by Susanna Clark, who wrote Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and Pierre Nessie, two books that I have loved a lot. I have a review for Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell right up here. And then I was in live show with Evie, Bookborn, and Leanne's Library. Also right there. They were both super fun. Just, just, I really love the Susanna Clark's writing. And this book actually takes place in the world of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I do believe it has a more feminine focus, aka there's female protagonists. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's Susanna Clark, so I'm excited. Susanna Clark is basically an auto-buy for me. Like, I want to buy everything that she writes. But she writes very little, uh, mostly because of health problems, which is fine. Guys, go read Susanna Clark, just anything. If you're looking for something shorter, check out Pierre Nessie, but be, keep in mind, Jonathan Stranger Mr. Norrell is a lot, a lot different. Next up, another continuing series. We have The King's Blood by Daniel Abraham. Am I an Abraham Stan? Is that? Yeah, Abraham Stan, absolutely. Just finished Age of Ash this last month. It was good. It was really good. And now I'm continuing on with The Dagger and the Coin. I should have a review up for book one, Dragon's Path, up here. But that's not going to come out until afterwards because I'm actually filming that review after I finish filming this. I'm going to try to batch a little bit. If you're watching this more than a week out, it, the, the link should be up there. What do I have to say about this? This this is a really fascinating series. It's Daniel Abraham's writing epic fantasy. And there's kind of two 
narratives going on. You have the banking narrative and then you have the soldier narrative, the, dag the coin and the dagger, per se. The soldier slash political narrative, I would say. And it's really going off of the exploration of which is more powerful or which provides more power or something along those lines. And honestly, it's great. Um, I really enjoy the banking narrative just because I understand at least some of it because of my accounting background a little bit. Because it really is mostly surface level stuff. And he explains the stuff that happens really well. So that's an interesting part with those storylines. And then you have the political narrative, which the po political war narrative-ish that Abraham is working. I mean, that's the meaning of the dragon's path because the dragon's path in this universe means war. And that's also super fascinating because I think he does a really good job with political structures, political machinations, and political just intrigue and stuff. That Anything with that, Abraham, Abraham and that really is always great. Intrigue in general. So I'm really enjoying this series and looking forward to continuing with King's Blood, especially after the developments at the very end of The Dragon's Path. What else haven't I talked about yet? Let's talk about some Malazan. This last month, you will be disappointed to know, Malazan fans, that I did not read any of what I wanted to, which was Dead House Landing by Ian C. Esselbont. So I'm going to be reading that this month, hopefully early on in the month, I think, just because I didn't prioritize it last month, so I will be prioritizing it this month. Hopefully, the goal is some, some, some month now I can complete all the books on my TBR, though it's unlikely, because I tend to have 10 to 12 books, and I read 5 to 7. <laughs> Dead House Landing continues the story of Kelneved and Dancer, who are characters in Malazan Book of the Fallen. This book is called The Path to Ascendancy. And yeah, uh, so far it was interesting. A little fast paced. I wish we had spent a little bit more time with some of the characters in the first one. But this actually gets to a familiar backstory. The, dead, the events in Dead House Landing, or that at least are started in Dead House Landing, are talked about in Malazan Book of the Fallen. This is where it's like, oh, wow, I can, I'm going to be able to see a lot more connections. There were some connections in the first book, but I feel like this one's going to have a lot more because there's a lot more characters that I know are going to be introduced in this one that I'm like, oh, yes, I know what happens to you. Another continuation, Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. So funny thing, as of right now, I haven't even started Royal Assassin. It is the 27th. Um, I do actually plan on starting that like literally directly after I'm done filming. I'm going to take a break before I go edit and start Royal Assassin, and I plan on finishing in the next two to three days. Hopefully before, considering it'll be another week before you guys get the wrap up, my plan is to finish Royal Assassin in the next three days or so, just so I can get that into the February wrap up. So, Assassin's Quest, a much longer book. And the f we're finally getting to a hob that I haven't read yet, because I've only read Royal Assassin, and then Assassin's um, Apprentice. So this will be a first time read for Quest. I've heard middling things about this. Like, especially when you compare it to Royal Assassin, people tend to like Royal Assassin more. And because Assassin's Quest is so much thicker, people think she meanders a little bit more in this one. So I also know there's a little bit more fantastical stuff in Assassin's Quest. Another series I'm continuing because I'm just doing a lot of series, I guess. Heirs of the Blade by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So, I did Sea Watch last month and the month before I did Scarab Path. Now we're on book seven of ten. Three more after this. And wow, just. Adrian Tchaikovsky really grew after those first four books. Like, the first four books were written before he published the first one, which is understandable. You can, act, you can tell, really. You can tell a lot. Because just how his writing changed between books four and five. And now book five, book six are definitely both my favorite in the series. Like, they're both awesome. Heirs of the Blade, also another one that's going to be very focused. Yeah, th this is going to be going into some storyline stuff that was set up in book four, at the end of book four. So, and has been mentioned once or twice throughout the other two books, but it hasn't really been dived into, which is great. Hopefully we'll get the... Mantis storylines that I want, or expansions of them, maybe? I don't know. Just Mantises. Because book two was slightly disappointing for reasons that you know if you've talked to me about book two. All right, three more. So, next up, we have another one that's kind of coming over from last month. That is Mr. Mercedes. This will probably be the first book I read after I read Royal Assassin. 
simply because I really want to get, I do want to get to this, but it just kind of left by the wayside with a lot of other commitments that I have, I had in February. So this will be the first one I read. Jake, if you're watching, which you probably are, I think you are, soon, very soon, very soon. Um, this is my first Stephen King book that I can think of. Yeah, this is my first Stephen King book. Not the only one I want to read because there's one or two others that I'd like to read. I've heard it was a good, decent starting point. It's about a car. Well, not a car, but a man in a car and some other violent things. Time for a buddy read, and that is a buddy read with Evie, technically, even though I think she's already finished it. It's been pushed back a little bit, and that is Scythe by Neil Schusterman, I believe. This is a YA about Grim Reaper. Grim Reapers, multiple. It's supposed to be pretty good, pretty good setup. Pretty good first book in a YA series. So, yeah, I've had it on my bookshelf, and now there's a buddy read for it, so I'm going to read it. That's going to be great. And the final last one is my Star Wars book for the month. I'm almost done with Tales of the New Republic. That's the other one I have to finish in the next two days. But then after that, I'm going to read Tales from Jabba's Palace. Tales of the New Republic referenced a bunch of events that happened after Episode Six in the Expanded Universe, the first, the original Expanded Universe, the Legends canon, if you will, and just like Return of the Jedi, obviously. This book, Tales from the Jabba's Palace, I think most of these short stories should be probably between episodes in five and six, if I'm not mistaken, but really could take place any time between like episode three and episode six. Though at the time this book was written, episode one wasn't even released, I believe. So most of these short stories should be between episodes four and six, maybe a little bit before. I'm excited for these because all of these tales things are leading up to eventually reading the Bounty Hunter trilogy and also ser serving as a nice kind of dipping my toe in point for just the expanded universe as a whole and kind of reintroducing me to the fact to, to some events that happen around the original trilogy and a little bit afterwards because there's a lot that happens there's a lot of books I mean I have like 200 books just sitting up here that are all expanded universe my Disney canon books aren't even on this shelf they're all the way up on a different shelf there's a lot I'm pretty sure there's like four or five hundred total but I could be wrong there's a lot and I'm excited to to, to read it yay that's all uh if you got this far thank you so much you're awesome um, again like subscribe comment all that jazz what are you gonna be reading in march let me know we can talk about it um, i also have a discord down below so if you want to join that and talk to me there do it also remember to get some rest because that is important bye